talk about it. Tell me all about it. I'm here. I want to know what's on your mind. Ooh, the world needs to hear from you. And I'm so glad to, to have a conversation to reach the nation. And it's all about you. We'll help each other to discover innovative ways to positively change the world. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. I am Nicole Everett, your host. And Conversations with Nicole is a talk show based in Tallahassee, Florida, focused on connecting the community through conversations. And since November of 2021, we have been talking about Black and Brown mental health, Black and Brown mental health, seeking to normalize the conversation around mental health and wellness and getting folks to connect with clinicians of color. Um, this has been a, quite a journey. I've met so many clinicians over these past few months, and I'm excited to have our special guest today. Um, I put out, as you, many of you know, I put out a call um, to action and in search of back in November, um, asking for clinicians and uh, the clinician that we'll be meeting with today actually was referred to me by a former guest. Uh, we call him Jay Oxime out of South Florida with Kai Wellness Center. And so I hope that Jay will be on tonight um, because this is part of the fruit of his labor in terms of making this connection. I'm excited and delighted to have our special guest, Ms. Christina Fontanelli. But before I bring her on, I want to hear from you, y'all. This is interactive. For those of you who are new to the platform, we are live on Facebook, on YouTube and on the Greater Works Network on Roku TV. So tag a friend, let them know they need to be on here. We are talking about all things aligning your inner self, you know, aligning your inner self. So dynamic topic, dynamic speaker, and we got some movement for you tonight. So I can't wait to get into that. Yes, y'all saw my moves on the intro. So y'all know I like to dance. So look, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, Christina. So let's have it. So listen, in the comments, put in your city, your state. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And again, tag a friend. Let them know they need to be on here with us tonight. I see you, Miss Maya. Maya is right here in Tallahassee. Thank you for being on. Appreciate that so much. Listen, tell folks, they don't want to miss this. This is a, a, a different type of conversation with Nicole tonight because we got some activity. It's not just us having this conversation and we want to get you involved in it as well. So again, let them know they need to be on here. So share, like, and tell them y'all need to be watching this. All right. So I am going to read a little bit of my guest bio. Miss Christina Fontanelli is a trilingual holistic health coach. She identifies as an Afro-Latina artist that focuses on psychotherapy and works from an expressive arts multimodal approach specializing in art and dance movement therapy. So this is the first time we've had a art and dance movement therapy. I didn't even know that that was like a thing, but it is. She is the author of Aligning Your Inner Self Meditation Journal, hence our title for today. And she attained her Master's of Arts in Art Therapy from the School of Art Institute of Chicago, known as one of the most influential programs in North America and internationally. She also graduated from 92Y, I hope I'm pronouncing that right or saying it right, Harness Dance Center's alternative, Alternate Route Dance Movement Therapy Program in New York. She is the CEO and founder of two, not one, but two mental health companies, Fontanelli Art and Aligning Your Inner Self. Fontanelli Art is a mental health and creative arts wellness program that aims to serve communities by providing art and movement 
based approaches to professional development, mental health awareness, and community cohesion to help you align your inner self. So I know I'm ready to get an alignment. So help me welcome Miss Christina Fontanelli. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for having me here in this space. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. So tell the people, who is Christina Fontanelli? Not what you do, but who is Christina? Yes, I am an artist. I am a creator. I am a lover of all people, of all backgrounds, of all beliefs. And I am someone who is a servant leader. I believe in being able to create spaces for people to grow and to see their inner purpose. Um, and I believe that we all are called and created to do something, but it takes that moment where things shift for you, that awakening. Um, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today is that full alignment of our inner self, our mind, our body, and our spirit. Um, I'm from Chicago. I live in Miami. I followed my dreams to move out here. And I am just a person who is like after life. Like I want every day to be afraid of me, of how I'm gonna really maximize and utilize every single thing within my reach. Um, Cause I'm grateful. I am truly grateful to be alive. I've had a lot of near death experiences. And so my perspective is just so altered and I want other people to appreciate their very breath. So that is a little bit about me. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. It sounds like you embrace life and try to make the most of the moments. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Indeed, indeed. So, you know, I'm from Miami, so I'm I'm a little jealous right now that you are <laughs> back home and look and go to the beach anytime you want to. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, enjoy that as well. Well, my mom is on here. Hello, mom. Hi. Down in Miami. So us. send greetings to her. And we also got Tamika, who is a social worker here in Tallahassee. She is on as well. Thank you for being on with us. Those social workers. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed, indeed. So before we move forward, I want to, mm -hmm. I have a, a disclaimer that I do read because yeah. I don't want people to, you know, even though we are giving great information here, I don't want them to mistake this for an actual session. Mm -hmm. So my disclaimer says that all topics past, present, and future on Conversations with Nicole are for informational purposes only. They are not to be used as a diagnosis for treatment or an answer to any personal issues related to the topic being discussed before, during, or after the program. All right. So there I said it. Okay. So I see Miss Doris is on here as well. Thank you for being here, Miss Doris. We appreciate Hi. the energy tonight. And this is interactive, y'all. So if you have questions, please put them in the comments. Let this us know. Is, yes, this is a safe space, and we're going to get some movement going on as well. There he is. Woo! What's up, Jay? What's hey. going on? Hey, thank you for being on here. So Jay was the one that connected us. So I'm so super grateful for that. Um, you know, when I asked him after his show, I was like, is there anybody you think would be a good match? He was like, you got to reach out to Christina. You got to reach out to Christina. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jay, for showing up. Appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And let's give greetings to Angela. Thank you for being on here. So tell me about this whole art and dance therapy movement like yes. yeah, give us some insight to all of that yeah so i started school um i went to illinois state university go redbirds um mm -hmm. back in illinois and i was actually on a path to become a biochemistry major i did it for a year and a half um and i was going to become a pediatrician from there i just i was always creative i was always artsy and i just mm -hmm. I was able to do that, but I didn't know if that was going to make my heart go boom every single day. And so, you know, I dabbled into a little bit of art and my faith is really a big part of my story. And I just shared with God, I was in class one day and I was like staring at the board and I was like, do I really want to do this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so I said, God, 
I, I want to do something artistic. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. I'm also 19 at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of like made a pact with God, kind of try to negotiate with him. Like, hey, I'm going to take this art class. If I get an A in it, I'll pursue my path with art. If I don't, then I'll stay to become a pediatrician. Okay. And my first assignment in that art class absolutely failed it. Mm. It was horrible. Um, I just, I didn't have the background that other people did at that school. Um, sorry, I started at University of Illinois Springfield, then I transferred to ISU. Okay. Um, but I just, I didn't feel like I was good enough as an artist because people knew how to mount up pieces and how to frame things and how to just follow assignments. And it was a black and white assignment. We had to use like four boxes, certain, you know, sizes and everything. I did that, but then I threw glitter on it. Then I threw paint on it. Then I like tied little creative things to dangle and make it 3D. So imagine this one colorful out of the box artwork and a line with black and white pieces next to it. Hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I was grateful that that teacher was just so open and sat with me before and after class and taught me how to mix paint, how to take care of paint brushes and how to just really dive into the artistry and I saw how healing it was for me to be able to express myself through colors. Um, from there, I transferred to Illinois State University. And when I told my parents, they were like, hey, Dana, what do you mean you're going to become an artist? You're supposed to be a doctor. We left you at that school. Now you're at this school. And so they were confused. They weren't supportive because the financial aspect of in that season, the art programs were getting cut, especially in Chicago, mm -hmm. and they didn't want me to struggle financially. So I 100% understand their concerns, but I'm hard headed. And when my heart goes boom after something, I just go for it. Um, I'm really like God led. So if I hear a yes, I'm running. I will leave everything behind and follow that. Because if mm -hmm. I hear a yes, that means that there's something inside of me that's being called to that. Um, so then I went on a whole journey at Illinois State University is it art administration, art with business? Am I gonna work at a museum? Am I gonna be an art teacher? So now we went on a whole other path for a year on what am I gonna do? Hmm. And I just had a breakdown. I remember being a student and I went into my advisor's office and I was just crying, like sobbing. And she was an advisor, her name is Angel Howard, shout out to Angel, and okay. she is a she was a trio advisor at the time, which helps um, first generation students who are in college. And she was just like, calm down, calm down. And I just remember just being so emotionally overwhelmed because I felt so purposeless mm. and so misled and misguided. And she was like, well, what do you like? And I'm like, I like art and I like, you know, the body and the brain. And I just really want to help people. And so she yeah. literally turns, types in art and psychology. And that is where the School of the Art Institute comes up with art therapy. Wow. That wow. was like, wow. It took me being vulnerable to speak up and say that I needed help and say that I needed support. And if I would have had pride or if I would have had shame and I would have never went into her office, mm -hmm. I 100% guarantee that I would not be an art therapist today. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing story. Amazing story. It's awesome. Glad you spoke up. And so, you know, being true to yourself too, I think yeah. that's also a very big lesson in the yeah. story, being true yeah. to yourself. So tell us about this book. Yeah. So I have a meditation journal, which is based off the title we have, and it's called Aligning Your Inner Self. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this book when I first moved here right after grad school, when I completed my program at the Art Institute with my art therapy degree. Mm -hmm. And I went through a whole other journey. And essentially with that one, I had moved here and I was in a performance at a church. Um, I believe it was like for Easter or something. And someone in the audience saw me at that time. I didn't. I moved here with no friends, no family, just packed my car after graduation. I had a place I found off Craigslist and I was gonna follow it 100%. Um, and I met her, her name is Jasmine Douglas. She's my best friend today. And we saw each other. She was like, oh, you're a great dancer. And I was like, oh, thank you, you know. And then we just like, that's it. And we maybe text every so often. 
And then my apartment got infested with ants. Oh. And I was like, how is this happening? Like, I'm from Chicago. I'm like, ants? Like, my, my apartment is getting taken over by ants. And the just the people, the landlord was just not friendly and not trying to help me. They didn't want to bring in, you know, the, pe- the people to, like, spray and stuff. And I had stayed as long as I could. And I finally was like, okay, we got two options. Either I speak up and I reach out to the one person I made a connection with months ago Uh and I ask for help or I'm going to sleep in my car. And I don't know how long that's going to be until I figure out another place with more money. Um, And so I had to push my pride to the side and say, hey, Desmond, you remember me? (laughs) Yeah, so I got a situation right now. I'm in Hollywood, Florida, and I cannot stay in my apartment anymore. And she was like, she didn't even ask any questions. She was like, come on, pack your car, bring all your clothes, bring as much as you want. You can stay with me. Nice. Three months later, I'm getting back on my feet. I'm there, but I'm struggling with depression. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, should I not have moved here? But I thought God told me to. And there's just so much fraud when it comes to Um, mental health here in Florida and insurance and all of that. And I just, I told God, like, I felt myself sinking into depression into like a rabbit hole. Mm. And I felt everything just becoming more and more isolating, even though I was with her, but I wasn't around family. Mm -hmm. And this was the first time I had moved away outside of college to live on my own. And so I asked him and I was like, God, can you give me something to help me get out of this hole? And help me to be able to help those behind me to not fall into depression like this. Hmm. And so little by little, I started getting ideas. And I got the book cover sitting at a KFC. I was on the face on my mom. And I was just talking. I was like, oh, I got it. And I grabbed markers and highlighters. And I just wrote it out. And then I just started building. And it's a meditation journal. And so Mm -hmm. I asked specific questions that are led to purpose and identity and family and cultural background and what makes like your heart go boom and what you're intrigued in. And I was writing it and she asked me one day while I was at her house, she's like, you know, when do you think you're gonna publish it? And I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe a year, you know, 12 months. She starts laughing. And I was like, what's so funny? Like, I'm serious, I wanna write this. And she's like, my brother's an illustrator. He can get this out in two weeks. And mm. I was like, what? And that just made it really real. And two weeks later, we got together and we we got it published and we got it out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 So what does alignment mean to you? Mm. So I would say those moments where like your back is against the wall and you can only, you can't move backwards. Like you're in the situation. Mm-hmm. I was in Miami. I can't just pick up and drive back. Mm -hmm. You can't surrender, but you have to make a choice. Yeah. And in those choices, to me, it means what does my heart want? What does my body need? What is my spirit saying? And what are the thoughts that may be pushing me away from the thing I'm supposed to be leaning into? Mm. And so the meditation journal just has a series of questions to bring those things up. Um, and being authentic in my own journey and in the intro and saying, I struggled with identity. I struggled with low self-esteem. Yeah. I struggled with imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to the trio alum. <laughs> yes. Um, and just knowing that I don't have to do it on my own, but I am responsible for knowing myself mm. and sitting with myself and being able to understand what do I value? Yeah. It's like a company. You should have a mission statement. Mm-hmm. You should have your values. You should know like what you stand for. Mm-hmm. Um, and this journal helps begin that journey of questions like forgiveness. Who do you need to write a letter of forgiveness to? Mm. What are you holding on to that you may not even have known? Right? So questions like that, that really make you think. Good stuff. So I am a note taker. So I'm taking notes and I will be regurgitating this yeah. throughout, throughout the evening. Yeah, please do. Right. Yeah, I like that forgiveness letter. Love it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to find out where we can get the book later on, but I want to get into, you know, some of the things that you talk about as it relates to this alignment and, and, and why alignment is beneficial. Like when I was putting this post together, you mm-hmm. know, because I like to have music. I love music. And so I like to have music when I put, put it in the story. And when I typed in alignment, there were like a bunch of songs that came up. I was mm-hmm. really surprised. And many of them didn't have words because it, it dealt more with chakras and things of that nature. But a lot of them did have words. Mm-hmm. And so to hear these people speaking so intentional about being aligned, mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, okay. So this is like a thing too, mm-hmm. right? So. Mm-hmm. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that. And again, for those of you who are just tuning in, because I see a number of you chiming in, um, mm. please, this, you know, I see your comments. You know, some of you are just saying how great and how nice this is and, and whatnot. But please ask questions as well. And we're going to get into the movement in just a Excellent. little bit. But talk to us about, you know, this alignment and why alignment is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um- and so my first question before we dive into that is, what is the first thing you visualize, Nicole, when it comes to alignment? Ooh, um, first thing I visualize when I hear the word alignment is just like all things just being in order, not forced, not, um, and not that it even has to be perfect per se, but just... Mm-hmm. It's in order. It's the way it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's what I think of when I hear about alignment. Okay, and so I think that's beautiful. And I want to ask everyone here who is, you know, tuning in and listening, like, what is your first thing you think of when it comes to alignment? And I think for some people, including myself, it used to be perfection mm-hmm. and order, strategy. Um, that there's no fault, that there's no weakness in that. So um, let's pause. Let's pause. Mm-hmm. I, I want to give folks an opportunity to just in the comments, let us yeah. know. When you think of alignment, when you hear of alignment, what do you think of? Yeah. I was actually listening to a, a sermon this morning and the speaker was talking about how when we hear words, we assign pictures to those Mm -hmm. words. We assign Mm -hmm. visuals to those words. Mm -hmm. And I never have really thought about it from that perspective, but we absolutely do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I I like to pause and give people opportunity to share. So Seta said peaceful fulfillment. Lisa said order. Um, And think bigger too. Don't just think about the visualization, but what emotions come up when you hear alignment? Is there a color? Is there a scent? Is there a memory that mm. may come up for you? Dig into your body for that stuff too. So that's that's like multidimensional, right? Because now mm-hmm. you're talking about, is there a sound associated with it? Is there a smell yeah. associated with it? Is there a feeling? Do you feel yeah. warm? Do you feel cool? Yeah. You know, a bunch of different things. Yeah, expand Expand your mind when it comes to that question. All right. Lisa said, ordered steps. Shanae said, living in my purpose and maintaining peace of mind. Love it. Ozzy, staying on track with purpose and being enthusiastic about the journey. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right. Lisa said, personal journey. Yeah. All right. And Nicole said, green, bright Mm -hmm. sunshine and freshness. I love the color incorporation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And warmth. I feel Mm -hmm. warmth with that. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, good stuff. Love it. Thank y'all for participating. Yes, good job. Indeed. So go ahead. I you didn't mean I mean I wanted to interrupt you just because I'm no, 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 you're fine. Yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. So so why is an alignment important important and, and why are folks so you know talking about this so much now? Yeah, yeah. Um I think that you know with the pandemic it made us sit with ourselves. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of time to really sit and reflect on just what we were doing and how we were living our lives and then the world paused. Yeah. And the more space that we have to sit with ourselves more things may come up. 
Mm-hmm. And so for me, when I think of alignment, it's not something that is straight or perfect, but I think of the spine. Mm. And I think of the fluidity of the spine. Mm -hmm. And I think of how it's not a straight line, but that there are moves and curves and elements that have to be connected in order to be the next part of it. And so there is something that someone said um, about staying on track with purpose, Mm -hmm. Ozzy, something that you had mentioned. And, you know, our purpose, it goes in flow. So, Going back to like when I was in college, I may have thought I was falling out of alignment with my purpose, with me wanting to pursue art. And so if I would have closed my mind and said, no, this is what I have to do. And I didn't allow for life to be my teacher and to try and say, just what if, what if I lean in? That was an alignment. But in my eyes, it didn't. In my parents' eyes, it wasn't. And so I want to bring into the space curiosity of, when that meeting gets canceled or you're not able to show up or things fall out of place or you didn't get that check or something changed. Mm -hmm. We think things are falling out of alignment because we're trying to control our life Mm -hmm. and we're not. Mm -hmm. All we have is our choices and how we respond to it. And so those moments where things fall out of our calendar or what we plan or things go away, it's really the alignment of life trying to get you back on track. And or trying to get your attention with the lesson that you're supposed to learn. And so it comes back. So alignment isn't just um, like I think of it as movement versus stagnant. Mm -hmm. And I also think of it as like a circle, the repetition, revisiting, reviewing um, and seeing, are you are you taking in what you're supposed to get from this moment? Are you passing grace along to someone when when you could practice anger? Mm -hmm. How does that unlock freedom in us? you and the people around you, family and friends. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. Ozzy said being in alignment is also being able to see the big picture too. Mm -hmm. Now he's diving into perspective Mm -hmm. and how you view things that our world is outside of us. Yeah. Our life doesn't revolve around us, but it's an impact and influence Mm -hmm. by those around us. Indeed. Indeed. Good job, Ozzy. Okay. <laughs> I'm a snapper. A snapper. Look, you uh, reminded me of um, spoken word. Yeah, that's why I do it. Okay. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> on Zoom, you know, we usually clap in spaces, but like people can't hear that. And so in mm-hmm. sign language, mm-hmm. we either do like this when I lead spaces and okay. activities, or we snap so people okay. can see the excitement. Oh, hands. gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, um, do we want to go ahead and dive into our movement? Yes, I say let's do it. Okay, let's. So do I'm going to give you all a little of an intro. So, as you know, my background is in art therapy and it's also in dance therapy. Um, and so I, I discovered that I wasn't fed enough once I got my art therapy degree because I kept talking about the body. I was like, we use our hands to make a painting or make the art. But what about the emotions that come up in that movement or in that color choice? And then coming from the black and brown community, art and movement is integrated into who we are, into how we cook and family gatherings and how we communicate. We're so expressive. Why not study these two things, bring it back to the community that utilizes it the most and use it in a therapeutic tool? I can't come in and ask someone verbally, hey, how are you feeling today? They may give me a superficial answer, but they may not be able to identify it. But maybe their movement can, maybe the song choice, or maybe their face expression shows it. And so what we'll be doing today is we're gonna dive into a sample of a dance movement therapy workshop that I do um, with my company, Funtinelli Art. And disclaimer, please, you know your body better than I do. And so don't exert yourself in a way that may be harmful or dangerous, but just follow along as best as you can, make modifications as you go. But I want you to let go. Let go of expectations of what you feel like may be silly or may feel weird or different and just lean in for this experience because we're gonna be doing some really creative stuff. So I'm excited to start with y'all. All All right, Nicole. All right, so listen, we are gonna have some fun, all right? Mm -hmm. So. You don't have to have on your dancing shoes. These, this, we're going to be in our chairs, okay? Mm-hmm. 
So just nobody, nobody can see you. We can't see you, y'all. Right, see us, right. So it's vulnerable for us. So, <laughs> so dive in and have a good time. Yes, yes, yes. All yes. right. Yes. Okay. Cue and music. Awesome. So the first thing I want everyone to do is I want you to leave your phone or your camera, wherever it is, and look at something else. Something in your space, a plant, a picture, whatever you have. And just take five breaths at your own pace. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Final breath. Big inhale in. Hold for three, two, one. Exhale. Coming back to center. I want you to take your hands, place them together, and I want you to rub them. I want you to set an intention. What do you want to get out of our experience today? Do you want to be more loving, more open, more positive, more caring? Whatever it is, just imagine. From here, I want you to embody it. Whatever you're seeking, you already have. So imagine like you're taking a bath. We're gonna go from the top of our head all the way to the bottom of our feet. Washing ourselves with that one thing that we need and want. Make sure you get your chest, your back, all the way down your legs, your thighs, just notice if you feel any tightness or tension and spend a lot of time sitting down. Mm -hmm. Build that connection, that mind-body connection. Okay. From here, what I would like for you to do is take your chin, drop it to your chest. Just take two breaths here. And let go of whatever you've been holding on to today. Take one more breath here. Big inhale. Audible exhale. From here, we're gonna shake our head up and down very slowly. Just shake your head yes. Let this be symbolic of yes to new opportunities. Yes to growth. And yes to change. Do this three more times at your own pace. Number to breathe. Notice how your back feels, your spine. And on the last breath, I want you to keep your head back, face towards the ceiling, and just let your head go and let it just be held up and supported by your shoulders. Take a big inhale, audible exhale. Two more times. Final breath. Coming back to center. Bringing your chin into alignment with your shoulders. We're gonna tap from side to side. What is something that you need to say no to? What is something that you need to set a boundary with, with yourself or someone around you. Let this be symbolic of you already saying no. One more time, each time. And coming back to center. Taking your hands and I want you to reach behind you and do a morning stretch. If you need to yawn, release it. Bring your hands and shake it out. Shake out your arms, shake out your wrists, shake out your shoulders in all directions. Bring your head with it too. Now take your hands, make a face, bring your elbows in, knees together, ankles together, and squeeze your body tight. 
squeeze for three, two, one, relax. Again. Squeeze, bring everything together. Knees, elbows, ankles. Three, two, one, relax. Final time. Elbows in, knees together, ankles. Three, two, one, and release. Just take a breath to notice tension versus letting go. From here, we're going to come back to our neck and then we're going to work our way up to our head. Take your hands and we're going to give ourselves a massage because I be holding stress. I don't I know about you, Nicole. Do. Yes, all Ooh. up in my shoulders. Man, I be looking buff. Like, I got muscle. No, it's just stress. It's just stress. <laughs> just baby Breathe. Up. Yeah, because I play flag football. So people are like, oh, wow, you work out. No, it's just stress right here. <laughs> That's all it is. That's it. It builds up. It does. All right. From here, let's go ahead and do head circles. We're going to go in one direction. Okay. And if you're going faster than me, then you're going too fast. I'm going to make it so uncomfortable, but it's going to be so good for you. Okay. So go ahead and begin. Go all the way around. And just notice if you're making small circles. Notice if you're holding your breath. Really try to let go and let gravity move and swivel your head around. Maybe you take your time at the bottom or at the top. Remember, if you feel any tightness or tension, you can pause, take your hand, place it on your head, and just send a breath to that part. Acknowledge if there's any tightness there. Let's go two more times in this direction. Remember to inhale in, exhale out through your mouth. Good job, everyone. And back to center. Reset, readjust. Let's go the opposite direction. See if you notice anything different. Remember to breathe. Inhale and exhale. Two more times. Let's come back to center. Coming back and resetting, dropping your shoulders back. And now let's go into some movement in our shoulders. I want you to imagine that you're pushing off anything that lo no longer serves you. Imagine that it's falling off. Is there a color? Is there an emotion? I feel like there's a lot of things that people in this space right now need to release and let go. So give yourself permission to do that. And I know it because I get chills when there's someone in the room that needs this. So for whoever this is, let it go. It's okay. One breath. And from here, take your hands, make a fist, bring them together. Now we're gonna rotate forward, but I want you to imagine you're drawing a circle on the wall with your elbows. Can you make your circle really big? Notice how this feels in your body. Awesome. Now can you make it really small? Can you go a little bit faster? And let's do big, three big ones. Good job. Awesome. And shake it out. Reset. From here, we're gonna do some seated twists. Now, okay. for my practice with dance therapy and yoga, um, from a trauma-informed, whenever we do some twists, we may release some anxiety and we also may release some trauma. And so, what I want you to do is breathe through it. You may not know what may come up. You may not need to know, just let it go, all right? So sit up nice and tall. And if you're sitting in a chair, you can do this on a couch. Take your hand one side you're going to place it behind you you're going to take your other hand and you're going to place it on the thigh on the same side where your hand is maybe it's not your hand or maybe you just lean on the chair 
I just want you to sit up nice and tall and just turn in that direction. Looking over your shoulder, find a focal point. I want you to just take a deep breath. Again, another breath. This time I want you to inhale, sitting up nice and tall. Can you twist a little bit more and hold for three, two, one. Exhale, coming back to center. Let's wiggle our spine from side to side. Can you move it back and forth? There you go. All right, now let's do the other side. Sitting up nice and tall, taking your other hand, placing it behind whatever you're sitting on. Take the hand to support on your thigh and look over your other shoulder. Find another focal point. What do you want to let go of on this side? Maybe a thought, a memory, an emotion. Take a breath. Exhale. Again. Final time, we're gonna push ourselves. Twist a little bit more. Hold for three. Two, one, exhale, coming back to center. All right, from here, I want you to open up your hands again, receiving love, positivity, light, energy, opportunity, whatever you need, yes. and give yourself a hug. Oh. And I want you to do this and squeeze your body tight. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Building that mind-body connection. There are so many neurons that we are firing right now, the brain and the skin. We need touch. Yes. We need touch. Again, inhale, open. This time I want you to close your eyes and really think about what do you need in this season of your life. Imagine that it's in your hands. Take a breath in. Exhale, bring it back to your body and give yourself another hug, crossing your arms the opposite direction. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Pressing it into your body. Sway side to side. Exhale because you've received it. Final time, opening up. I want you to see yourself from your inner child. What do you miss about yourself? What's your favorite memory that you used to have growing up? See it, remember it, receive it. Take a breath, bring that memory back up and give yourself a hug. This time we're hugging our inner child. Let's sit here for a second. Just sway, maybe some side to side or you rock. Our inner child needs love. I believe the core of our inner self is our inner child. That person you were before the world came to you, before you were told that you weren't enough, before you were broken down in your spirit, maybe before someone in your family said something that hurt you. For all of that, that is your true self. Take a breath in. Exhale. The last thing we'll do is we're going to take your hands, grab them together. This is my favorite part. We're going to make silly faces. So taking this energy of love, positivity, place your hands on your face. And I want you to squeeze your face and squeeze the muscles and smile and pull and tug and push. Just relax all the tension in your face and smile. What you can do is take two fingers, place them on your jaw and open your mouth and just let the lower jaw fall open. And just breathe in and out through your mouth. Final breath. Taking one finger, you're gonna take the thumb, place it on your forehead. And I want you to just relax. Sometimes we're so serious. Mm -hmm. Relax that part. You don't have to hold tension here either. Awesome. The last thing, take one hand, place it over your heart. Take your other hand and support it. And we're gonna close an affirmation. Mm -hmm. I want you to really, really do it, say it, and mean it. I'm gonna know if you're not saying it and you don't believe it. And okay. guess what? Even if you don't believe it, you just saying it is the first step. 
You got to say something over and over until your body receives it, your mind knows it, and your heart is acting out like it's already true. Okay. All right. So I uh, am powerful. I'm powerful. I I am purposeful. I'm purposeful. I I can do anything. Can do anything. No, I got you. You got to really say it again. I I can do anything. Can do anything. I set my mind to. I set my mind to. Period. Period. Give yourself a round of applause. Woo! Woo! Yes. I'd love if you all can put some of your own affirmations in the chat um, of what you want to believe and what you want to walk into. Yes. So y'all, if you will, please put your own affirmations in the chat. I am powerful. I am purposeful. I can do anything I set my mind. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. Love it. That was great. Oh my Aww. goodness. <laughs> so good. <laughs> what was great about it for you, Nicole? Is there anything you learned about your body and what you needed? Um, the movement was really great. Um the stretch, the stretching that was that was great. Um, and I think hugging myself because I have felt myself um, in need of touch and so just touching myself in that way was, yeah. was, was meaningful to me yeah yeah absolutely in a positive and healthy way to look yes. at our hands look at our body right mm-hmm. exactly Hey, Joanna, okay. my marketing Ozzie. outreach director is here. Oh, nice. Hey, Ozzy said he's ready for bed now. Hey, you're relaxed. I love it. <laughs> okay, so Lynette's affirmation, I matter, I am worth it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Love it. All right, Seta, I am powerful, purposefully, and can do anything I set my mind to. Yes, Hannah. Yes, so Johanna said, yes, so relaxed. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Weena, I enjoyed it. I released tension. I was so tight and stressed. That exercise helped me tremendously. Awesome. And that was only 15 minutes. I know. Imagine that. Wow. Indeed. Um... Uh, Susan, I came on the end, wish I was on earlier. Hey, it's okay. We got the replay. So, okay. Yes, we got the replay. <laughs> God is within her. She will not fail. Psalm 46 and 5. Yes. Thank you. Said, uh, I went all the way back to the childhood memory of myself. It was nice to be there and see that little girl. Oh, beautiful. Yay. Yes. I love that. Monica said great and awesome. Wonderful. Thanks for being on here. Um, Miss Katrina Morris, I am wonderful. I am amazing. Love yeah, you are. Yeah, yes, you are. are. Really enjoyed it. We need this more often. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Awesome relaxation tonight. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So some folks saying they got to watch the, watch the replay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Hey there. Go within and shut the door. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's All awesome. right. Shanae said, I got through the first half before my kids interrupted, but I already feel less stressed. Yes. That's what it's all about. That's exactly what it's all about. Uh, Rachel, very relaxed and soothing. I am powerful, highly favored, and blessed. Yes, Yes, I love it. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Yes. I am powerful. I am purposeful. I can do anything I set my mind to. Anything at all. You are awesome. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Ooh, this is great, Christina. <laughs> you own the something, child. You own the something. I'm just trying to share it with the world. Like, we all do not have to live like this. All it takes is five minutes and some breath work. That's it. That's it. Oh, wow. Yes, but you are a good guy, too. You know, that, that helps. That helps. That helps. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I just say, I am healthy and I am wise. Yes. Continue to speak these affirmations every single day. You know, I have affirmations in, um, in places where I may have to stand a little bit. So like when I brush my teeth on my mirror or when yes. I'm washing dishes on that cover, and I just read it over and over until I begin to believe it mm-hmm. and change my situation because I changed my mindset. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, affirmations are very important. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to be needing them more and more, mm-hmm. <laughs> more now than ever before with yep. all of the things that I have. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Mm-hmm. I am more than enough for my purpose. Yes, you are. Yes, you yeah, are. you are. Yes. Uh, Joanna, I am loved, I am valued, I am worthy. Yes. Joanna. Yes. Trisha, I know that affirmations can be true, but at this given moment, you can't compare the thing that is stressing you the most. Yeah. It, you know, it can be overwhelming, but, mm-hmm. you know, we got to do our very best to try to push through. I think the movement also helps you. You know, because it's one thing to say it, but to to have to it. Like you said, when you were talking about pushing those things off that aren't mm-hmm. serving you well and having that movement to go along with you, that's mm-hmm. very empowering. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You are seen, Trisha. We see you. Yeah, for sure. Um, Lynette said, I came late. Where do you practice? I want to add this to my self care routine. Do you have got recorded guides? So, um, we actually just launched this year um, our wellness, well, this one specifically, our wellness classes. And so, I have a company that's called Funtinelli Art, and we utilize this space to cause community healing in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we incorporate art and movement and we have a team of people, Joanna, shout out to my marketing and outreach director. Um, so every Sunday we do meditation, every Wednesday we do yoga and every Saturday we do Zumba. Um, and so I'm sure that we can connect Nicole and share all my yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can go to fontanelliart.com mm-hmm. to learn more about the services that we offer. Um, we offer hybrid and virtual experiences um, and we do groups, small groups, schools, communities, families, anything and everyone. Um, so we would love to be able to um, see some of you all and provide Absolutely. some services. Absolutely. And everything is virtual, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Make sure I did that right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. So how often would you recommend doing the movement? Once an hour. Really? Mm-hmm. Even if it's getting up and just getting a cup of water. Wow. Like it's getting up and using the bathroom. Okay. Um, definitely once an hour. It doesn't have to be a whole stretch routine, mm-hmm. um, but definitely just getting up and shifting. If you can set a timer or an alarm or something to disrupt you, mm-hmm. um, our body needs movement. It's mm-hmm. meant to be in fluidness. Um, and so it's not just the fact that we're sitting down, but we're sitting down and we're stagnant. We're at a computer. And so we're tensing up little by little by little by little by little by little. And so that hour of just shifting and listening to what your body needs, it can reset you. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. That's good to know. I mean, I, I've heard that we need to get up and, and move. But, um, you know, this type of movement, I think, definitely be something that can help you be even more productive (laughs) yeah yeah and it's intertwined you know i'm glad that we did it in a seated position because you can do this at your desk you can do this in your car Mm -hmm. you know it just takes these small movements Mm -hmm. head necks rolls twists all of this is accessible yes in a seated position and if you want to go deeper you know you can take a yoga class or a meditation class Mm -hmm. we can take you on that journey but Mm -hmm. your body deserves it be nice to your body Indeed, indeed. Now, I, kn- I know that um, while we were doing the exercise, you talked about um, if you've experienced trauma, something may come mm-hmm. up. So mm-hmm. just talk a little bit about that in terms of, you know, this this type of work and yeah. the healing that can take place as it relates to it. Yeah. And so um, we really just have so much of our classes 
I train all of our independent contractors to teach from a trauma-informed, inclusive, accessible approach. Um, and one of the things I've been through a lot of trauma and I have a lot of trauma stored in my body from accidents, domestic violence, sexual assaults. So I'm really big on my being aware of what our body needs. And I know that one of the areas where we store trauma is in our hips and in our lower back. And so whenever we do some type of twisting motion, think of a towel that you're trying to drain. Sometimes that release can also spark danger and you know our central nervous system is like ah we got to figure it out we got to build you know a wall or a defense mechanism and so that breath work complemented with that twisting is what allows your body to know that although i'm doing a very different movement i'm not in danger and it's okay to relax and release that and really calm the central nervous system i work a lot as a mental health consultant with daycares and I give them movement techniques and strategies. And I always tell them, if there are kids who have a hard time falling asleep, just rub the middle of their back and rub from top to bottom. What you're saying to the back and the central nervous system and the spine is that you're okay, you're safe, you're grounded, there's no danger. And so if kiddos need that, we need that too. And that's where that self-touch comes from. Right. And so being able to tell ourselves that this isn't an aggressive move, but that this isn't a nice one and this is OK. And so being able to breathe through any of those rigid movements, but also being cautious that you don't want to push yourself too hard. My first yoga class, we did um, a hip opener, a, a child's pose where you bring your feet together, your knees out wide and you lay out flat with your face on the mat. And I was crying. I was like, why am I crying in this class? And it was at an LA Fitness, first year of the class. And I was like, I do not like this. I don't understand why I'm crying. And I was so disconnected from the trauma I experienced in my hip area. And that was its way of releasing and expressing, my body expressing to me, hey, we got some stuff we need to let go. And so that's why in the beginning I said, if you feel anything come up, just pause, notice it take a breath and don't rush it. Wow. Healing takes time. Wow. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Uh, Joanna said, this is bringing me to tears. Yes, we need to care for ourselves and our inner child. Absolutely. Nicole said, my stomach gets in knots when triggered by people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And Lynette said, I heard a clinician say holding trauma in the hips is often tied to sexual violation or being beaten on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there's a lot of stuff that comes with that. Um, and I think that it's just a spectrum of it. We can name so many things, yeah. but that won't really be effective. But the effect of this, what do you do when you feel right. that? Right? right. And so one, making sure that you're in a safe space. Um, and we even teach our yoga classes to make sure that if we're doing hip openers or anything, meditation, that we're not exposing you. That mm -hmm. if your butt is in the air, I'm not behind you. If you're in a downward dog, I'm in front of you. So right. I'm creating safety within that space. Um, but just being able to notice within yourself that if there is some discomfort or some danger, if someone's around or even a conversation and you feel something, listen to that. Um, definitely get support. Let someone know, you know, having a safe circle, someone that you can reach out to um, just to maybe like check in with and say, hey, you know, something happened, I feel weird. Having that safety plan, right? The second thing is definitely get a therapist, getting that one-on-one -on -one support and having um, someone that you can dive deep into um, with those things that may come up for you. And the third thing is being able to create a self-care plan, right? In the morning, I recommend that we all spend at least 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at night, kind of like bookends, just reflecting. How did I feel today? What happened to my body? And when you wake up, am I sleepy? How did that dream make me feel? What do I need to do? Am I stressed? Am I holding on to anything? And finding those moments of quietness and stillness, you can definitely do that with the meditation journal to guide you. I acknowledge that when I first started, sitting in silence was so scary. I didn't know what to ask myself. I didn't know what to say. It was uncomfortable. But with the guide, you can go at your own pace. 
and you can be asked questions that you may maybe not have thought of before. And that is where the healing happens from the top of the tree to the root of where your trauma may be coming from. But you don't have to do it alone. Love it. <laughs> this is great, 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 great. So where can we get the book? Yes, you can go to fontanelliart.com. Okay. Um, and you can purchase the book there. It's also available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And it is called Aligning Your Inner Self. Yes. And I'm telling you, it's going to be the greatest investment you could have done. Mm -hmm. We also are in the works of publishing our second book, Aligning Your Inner Grief. Aligning Your Inner Grief. Aligning Your Inner Grief. Really? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a sneak? A, a little something, something? <laughs> <laughs> um, when it comes to grief, I don't think that, you know, in particular, the Black and Brown community have been taught on how to deal with grief. I think that we sit in a lot of grief, even if it's not in our own family or friends group, we've witnessed it over the past three years, a high level of it. Mm -hmm. um, what do we do with it? How do we sit with it? What conversations do we have? Mm -hmm. I think we've been taught generally to just suck it up, hold it together and push through. And it's three months and you're still crying over that? Yep. That does not work. And it, it doesn't work, it hasn't worked and it will not work. And so this workbook, I pour out my heart because I, I've had a lot of grief and I'm still going through grief. And I was just like, again, how do I pave the way for those behind me to mm -hmm. join me in this journey on what are the different stages of grief? Mm -hmm. How does it, how did I, how did I see someone go through grief growing up, maybe mm -hmm. a parent or a family member? And did I embody that into my own experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. So that will be coming out by the end of the summer. Um, we're okay. getting the final drafts with our illustrator, but that one's going to be powerful. And then we're actually going to have a five week um, curriculum that dives mm -hmm. into aligning your inner grief, not nice. a support group, mm -hmm. but going over tools and strategies mm -hmm. on what this looks like and how we can begin to address it head on. Okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. No, that's good yeah. stuff. Um, we've mm -hmm. had two shows on grief. Um, Dr. Faith out of Atlanta, we did uh, shows on grief and loss outside mm -hmm. of death. Um, and mm -hmm. also we did one on grief and loss, but also forgiveness, dealing with forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Grief isn't just a loss of a person. For me, I challenge it. Grief can be a loss of an identity of self, mm -hmm. a loss and a mourning of a city, a job, a place, a thing. It's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that is a very needful book, um, needful topic. Yeah. And we, you know, need to give space to one another um, when it comes to grief, because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've we've had some some things that have been disappointing or mm -hmm. that have, um, caused us to be hurt or. Mm -hmm angry or you know a number of things so yeah um but we need to give give ourselves ourselves grace and space to feel those feelings yeah and be okay and not feel rushed about it or like mm -hmm. we should already be over it by mm -hmm. now or whatever so yeah yeah mm -hmm. i 100 percent agree with you indeed indeed all right so Joanna say yes grief is so much more. Some don't even realize that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. This was great. <laughs> it was amazing. I love it. Was. Thank you for being so interactive with us and sharing like yeah. what was on your mind and your heart and made the experience just that much more energetic. So thank you for that. Absolutely. So before we go, are you accepting new clients? Oh, so I don't do one-on-one -on -one therapy. However, I do one-on-one -on -one life coaching okay. um, and it's called aligning your inner self. Okay. <laughs> so right. this became a workshop. It became this, this, and eventually became its own company um, where I work with people as dream strategists and a life coach. And I help you break beyond imposter syndrome, stress, anxiety, low self-esteem. And I have tears where I guide you on aligning your inner self so you can okay. live your aligning your inner life. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. aligninginnerself.com is where you can go and get more information and apply for the services. Okay. 
I'm going to put that in there as well. All right, yeah. for sure. At Fontelli, Fontanelli, you mm -hmm. do group class. Group. Yeah. Fontanelli okay. Art is all group, and then aligning it in yourself is more one on one life coaching. All right. And it's aligning your inner self.com? Correct. That one up as well. All right, so we're trying to give you all all the things so you know how to connect with Miss Christina. Yeah. So align your inner self for life coaching and fontanelliart.com for the yoga and meditation. And do you do art classes or no? Yeah, um, so we do art therapy workshops um, mm -hmm. for groups and we also do dance group and therapy workshops mm -hmm. for groups as well. Okay, and all virtual. Virtual, and we're starting this summer to have in person. Um, okay. So people are flying out, um, flying me out to different spaces to lead these like two day, three day events. Okay. Good mm -hmm. deal. Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. Well, so um, happy for you. Excited about what you're doing. Thank and you. um, definitely keep up the great work. Um, if you all thought this was beneficial, give us some hearts or some thumbs up. Yeah, show us some love. Yeah, something in the comments. Let us know. Let us know. And a special us. shout out to Jay for making this connection. Absolutely. And a special shout out to you for just creating the space and oh. making this accessible to people. Um, yeah. Really, really appreciate you. No, my pleasure. My pleasure. This is, you know, what it's all about. You know, I, I my mantra is that we all have gifts and talents that the world is waiting on and we need not sit on them, but we need to be sharing them. And I I hope I pray that my platform is a, a place where people can do such a thing. So thank you for sharing your gifts, your talent, mm -hmm. your passion, your purpose with us today. We have truly been blessed by you today. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to do a practice that we all should be doing. I received that. All right. Yes, ma'am. I'm not going to minimize them. I'm not going to be like, oh, this was. No, I received that. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Yay. Thanks for all the hearts, everyone. I know. I'm loving it. We get a lot of love. I feel so love. <laughs> <laughs> the virtual love. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm here yes, for all so of this. For those of you who have not um, subscribed to the Conversations with Nicole YouTube channel, I invite you to do so right now. Stop what you're doing. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Go, 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 go. Follow Christina, follow me. You know, we have great and wonderful things coming up in the future. Christina already told you about some of hers. Um, on a local level, Tallahassee, the two major things that I have been working on have been the Be Kind to Your Mind Mental Health and Wellness Fair, which is taking place next Tuesday, um, May 17th at the Walker Ford Community Center at 5.30 p.m. You can go online and find out more information or check out my page. And then the Solar South Side Festival is kicking off starting this Saturday, May 14th through May 21st. And we got a whole host of events going on for Solar South Side Festival. So get involved, get involved, get involved. Yeah. Um, yeah, in the community. Again, yeah. thank you all. Thank you, Christina. Um, appreciate you. Y'all have a great rest of the week, great weekend, and hopefully we'll see you next week on Conversations with Nicole. All right, everyone. Bye. Bye.